Here's how to easily install wiring from your starter battery into the back of your four wheel drive wagon to power your DC charger. For this installation, we are using an Adventure Kings 25 amp wiring kit. And the other things that I'm gonna use are some cable ties, some split tube, I'll need a pair of side cutters, a spanner to undo my battery terminals, and a little bit of electrical tape. Okay, so very first step, pull the fuse out of the fuse holder. We'll put that in at the very last step when we're all done. So before I install this, I'm gonna put some split tubing on it. This does a couple of things. First of all, it protects physically the cabling. We're gonna be running this down and underneath the vehicle, so if any stones or rocks or sticks flick up while you're traveling, it's physical protection for the cabling. The second thing it does is, well, it looks a bit nicer, a bit more of a factory finish. So here's a good tip. Here's how you put this split tubing on. Get the end of the tubing, feed it onto the cable, and then just start pushing. This stuff is uh, 22 millimeters in diameter. There's a little bit of extra room in here, but that's good because it means it goes on nice and easy. Cool, split tube on. Now, good little bit of practice here is a little wrap of electrical tape every six, eight inches, something like that. Just helps stop the split tubing from coming off. But conversely, if you need to then get to the wiring at some stage, do some uh, diagnosis or add another bit of cabling into the circuit, all you've got to do then is just cut down these small bits of tape and you've got access again. Now you notice I stopped wrapping tape about halfway down. That's because we're going to run this down the chassis rail and pop it up into a grommet inside the vehicle. Once we go through that grommet, we don't need that split tubing. It's mainly for protection under the vehicle. So I am going to shorten that split tubing. And then once I know the length of how far I need the actual cabling to be, how long I need it to be, I'm going to shorten the cable and recrimp it because obviously the shorter the cable run, the better it is at carrying power through. There's two ways that you can get this cabling inside the vehicle. The first and probably the most typical way is a firewall grommet. Now, I'll show you that up on screen right now. They look like this. I will say this though, what you'll need to do is poke a hole through it to feed your cabling through, but you need to be careful because in most cases, these grommets have all the cabling and the factory wiring coming from the ECU passing through them. So if you go in there with a knife and cut a couple of those cables, I promise you, you will invent new languages to swear in because you'll be in a world of hurt. So please go nice and slow. Uh, and once you get that cabling through, a little dab of silicon to seal it all back up is a good idea. What I'm going to do, however, is I've got a very nicely located grommet in the floor of the tub in the uh, rear foot wall there. So I'm gonna go along the chassis rail, I'm gonna cable tie it in place. I'm actually gonna poke it up rearwards in there. Okay, so let's start feeding this down to the back of the vehicle now. What I'm gonna do is feed the majority of it down to the ground, and then I'm gonna position this cabling up the front here, nice and neatly, and I'm gonna cable tie it all in place. I'm actually gonna connect it to the battery now. Of course, we've got no fuse in the fuse holder, so it's perfectly safe to connect everything up here, secure it nice and neatly up here, and then we can work our way backwards. So you can see here that I'm just taking my time to work the cabling up as neatly as possible. I'm trying to follow as much uh, factory wiring as possible, because it gives me somewhere uh, nice and easy to cable tie everything to. The important thing to know is you should be avoiding anything that is excessively hot. So exhaust manifolds, turbos, that sort of stuff, anything that can melt wiring. And I guess the other important thing here is that we want to avoid any moving parts. So cable ties do two things. Firstly, they obviously neaten your install up, but the second and probably more important thing they do is uh, strategic placement of cable ties prevents cabling from moving. Cabling that moves or has excess tension on any joints or connectors or curves or whatever is gonna be much more prone to failure and is gonna fail a lot quicker than if you take your time and secure all your cabling so it doesn't move around while you're traveling. Okay, so the trick here now is to get the cabling back to where you're gonna get it into the vehicle. Again, avoiding any excess heat sources, in particular, well, I've got the exhaust running down this side here, and physically protecting the cabling as well. So I'm going to uh, do my best to get it up sitting on top of the chassis rail. I'll just run it in position first, figure out where I want it to be. And then what we'll do is, once we've got it positioned roughly where we want to be, 
We'll just get in there with a couple of cable ties and really stop it from moving. But again, it's not a race. This is about taking your time. Do it once, do it right, and you'll never have to worry about it. So I've got it down to a grommet that I'm gonna run the cabling up through. So we'll just pull the carpet back and we'll reveal the grommet. Now just be very careful when you pull any trim up. Those little plastic clips, they do break and the more that break, the more your car rattles. So just be careful, go slow. So we'll just pull our carpet back. There's our grommet right there, perfect. So we're up inside the vehicle, happy days. Now you could leave this cabling as long as it is here, especially if you had your DC charger right in the back of your car but mine's sitting right here, just behind this uh, C pillar here. So just for a little bit better electrical performance, I'm gonna shorten it, just cut it to length. So I'll just sort of rough in what, how long I need, which is, yeah, I think that's about plenty there. And we're just gonna give it a little chop and we'll just re-terminate the ends. And that's why those included extra terminals are so handy. We've thought of everything. Yes, it is the home stretch, but I can't stress this enough. Still take your time here. These last couple of connections are as important as anything we've done so far. And in fact, probably a little bit more important because if you don't properly crimp these connections down, what you're gonna find is you're gonna add unnecessary resistance to your cabling, which increases voltage drop, increases amp draw, and means that your second battery is not gonna charge properly always important just to give it a little tug just to make sure it's on there nice and firm okay so we'll just put the quick connector housing on and it always seats with a nice satisfying little click and that's how you know that it's in place just push it up and there you go so the last thing I'm going to do is just take a bit of time just to feed this up to well I've got my DC charger already installed here and I've actually um, hard mounted the quick connect plug here underneath this little shelf that we've made up so all I'm going to do is just Connect it in place so I know where it wants to, where I want to feed it. And then I'm just gonna take the time to just hide it up behind a few of these little trim pieces here and then happy days. So remember that excess cabling that I cut off the end that I didn't need? Well, I'm gonna put it to good use. It's the perfect length to run from the output of my DC charger down to my battery. So I have a little MIDI fuse holder that I had sitting around here. Uh, it's only a short run of cabling from the DC charger down to the battery, but you should always protect any run of cabling from short circuits. So I'm just gonna wire it in line now. This is um, eight mil squared cabling, which means that we need uh, an eye terminal that will accept eight mil cable, but the MIDI fuse holder is only a six mil post, so you need a eight dash six eyelet to add onto it. And then of course, on the other end, we need some eight dash eight eyelets to go to the battery. And there we go, the perfect little connection from the DC charger to the battery. Now, one final step and we are done. Final step, fuse back in. And that's it, that's the King's 25 amp wiring kit installed into the back of a four wheel drive wagon. I told you it would be easy.